Hi guys, and welcome to the second video in this series on making a 3D endless runner in Unity. In this video, we will be creating the ground, spawning it continuously in front of the player, and destroying the tiles behind the player. The way we're going to be doing this is by creating a ground tile, which will be composed of two tiled objects, a plane, which will be what the player runs on, and an empty game object, which will tell the next tile where to spawn. The red dot shows where the ground tile's pivot is, which is the reference point for its position. This means that if we have two tiles, and set the position of one of them to the spawn point of the other, the planes will line up perfectly. With that in mind, let's implement it in our game. As we'll be spawning the ground at runtime, we can go ahead and delete the ground plane that we created in the last video. Instead, I'll right click and add an empty game object, then press F2 to rename it and call it our ground tile. I'll right click on that, then go to 3D object, plane. This adds a plane as its child object. I'll set the position on the Z to 5, remember that's forward, then right click on the ground tile again and create an empty. I'll press F2 to rename and call it the next spawn point. I'll set its position on the Z to 10. If I select the ground tile now and then the next spawn point, you can see that their positions match what we talked about at the start. If their locations aren't the same on your screen, click on the tool handle position toggle up the top, changing it from center to pivot, and that should solve the problem. With the ground tile complete, I'll right click on the assets folder and create a new folder, and I'll call this prefabs. I'll just drag and drop this ground tile into that folder, which creates a prefab of the ground tile. A prefab is just a way of storing a game object with all of its information and components so that it may be reused later. To see what it does, drag and drop it into the scene view and you'll see an exact copy of our ground tile has been created. Now let's delete all of the tiles in the scene since we'll be spawning them from a script. Then right click in the scripts folder, create a C sharp script and I'll call this ground spawner. Give it a moment to compile, then double click to open it up in Visual Studios. We can delete the two using tags at the top, as well as the update function, as we won't be needing either of those. We're going to need two variables, a public game object, ground tile, and a vector3, next spawn point. Now let's go back to the editor. Right click, create an empty game object, and I'll call this ground spawner. Click add component, and we'll add our ground spawner script to it. With that done, click on the prefabs folder, and drag and drop our ground tile prefab into the ground tile slot. Now let's save and go back to Visual Studios. In here, we need to create a new function, so make some space, then type void spawn tile, open and close parentheses, and then a pair of curly braces. This declares a function called spawn tile, which returns a void or nothing. If we replace the void with something like int, we would be telling the script to expect the function to return an integer. As we don't need any output, we'll leave it as void. Inside it, we'll say instantiate, open some brackets, and then put in our variable ground tile, then next spawn point, and then quaternion dot identity. Instantiate is how you spawn an object in Unity. The first input is the object we want to spawn. The second one is where we want to spawn it and the third one determines the rotation of it. Quaternion.identity simply means no rotation. Now we need to set the next spawn point, but to do that, we need to be able to reference the child of the object we just created. In case you forgot, 
The next spawn point is a child of our grand title. To get the reference, in front of instantiate, we'll say game object temp is equal to this instantiated item. You might recognize this as the syntax for creating a variable, and that's exactly what we're doing here, creating a variable named temp, short for temporary. With this, we can go to the next line and set the next spawn point by saying next spawn point is equal to temp dot transform dot get child and in parentheses it wants an index. If we go to the ground tile in the editor, just open it by double clicking on it, you can see that the spawn point is the second child after the plane. As we start counting from zero, we say that it has an index of one and the plane will have an index of zero. We can go back to the script now and put a one in there. Finally, we have to say dot transform to get the transform component and then dot position to get its position. That's the whole function complete, but currently we aren't actually calling it from anywhere. To do that, let's go to the start function and then just call the function. So spawn tile parentheses and a semicolon. But we want to make sure that it works spawning multiple tiles. So let's copy that line by pressing Ctrl C without anything selected, and then paste it four times with Ctrl V. If we go back to the editor and run the game, you'll see that five tiles have spawned and they're all in the right position. Great. A problem that we have is that the first tile spawns at the same place as the player. So to fix this, I'll simply select both the camera and the player and then drag them forward approximately 5 units. Going back to the start function, there is a much need to way to call something multiple times and that's using what we call a loop. To do this, just type 4 and then hit tab twice to insert the full snippet. If that isn't an option for you, just copy what is on my screen. The only thing you have to worry about here is that i is less than length. Replace length with however many times you want to call this function. For me, I'm going to say 15, but you can use whatever number you want. Inside the curly braces, we can call our function, so spawn tile, and we can delete all of the ones outside of this for loop. All this does is call our function the number of times that we specify, but it's much cleaner and easier to read this way. Now we have tiles that spawn at the start of the game, but we need to keep spawning tiles as the player moves forward. The way we're going to do that is by having a trigger on our grand tiles, which will call a function both when the player overlaps it and then when the player leaves it. When the player leaves the collider, we will spawn the next tile. To do this, let's go to the grand tile prefab, select the grand tile parent, and go to add component and box collider. Check the is trigger box, then set its size to 10 on all dimensions so that the player can't possibly miss it, and set its position on Z to 5 to center it. You can see that it covers the entire tile. Now let's create a new script. So go to the scripts folder, right click, create, C sharp script, and call this ground tile. Wait for it to compile and then double click to open it up in Visual Studios. You can delete the two using tags up the top. We're going to need one variable, which will be type of grand spawner. And I'll call this grand spawner with a lowercase g. The type of this variable is the script that we just made, meaning that we'll be able to access functions and variables from that script. We need to set the reference in the start function, so I'll say grand spawner is equal to game object dot find object of type and in angular brackets grand spawner. Finish with parentheses and a semicolon. This returns the first object matching the type grand spawner, and we know that we only have one in the scene, so it's safe to do this. Next, create a function called onTriggerExit. This will have an input type of collider called other. 
This is the default function called when anything exits a trigger. Normally we would have to check that the item that exited was the player, but in this case we know that nothing else is moving, so it must be the player. In here, we want to call the spawn tile function, but if I try to say ground spawner dot spawn tile, you can see that it's not an option. Remember, to access something outside of its own script, it has to have a public modifier on it. So let's go back to the ground spawner script, and in front of the void, we'll put public. So it now says public void spawn tile. Now we can go back to the ground tile script and say ground spawner dot spawn tile. Finally, under that, we'll say destroy open parentheses game object with a lowercase g, comma, and two. This is to destroy the game object two seconds after the player leaves the trigger. We're finished with the scripts now, so save and go back to the editor. Select the ground tile and apply the script that we just made to it. If I now exit from the prefab view by hitting the back arrow in the hierarchy, I'll zoom out in the scene view so that we can see more of what's happening, then hit play. You can see that grand tiles are spawning themselves in front of the player and destroying themselves behind it. The final thing that I want to do in this video is add a material to the ground so that it looks a bit nicer. To do this, I literally went to Google Images and searched for brick ground texture. I found this texture, which I'll link to in the description if you want to use it. If not, you can use anything you want. I'll drag and drop it into the Assets folder, then right click, Create, Material. I'll call this ground underscore map, short for material. I'll click on the circular icon next to albedo and select the ground texture that I just imported. Finally, if I go back to our ground tile, I can drag and drop the material we just made onto the plane to apply it. I will also put the material into our materials folder to keep it clean. If I hit play now, you will see that the game already looks a ton better just from one small tweak. That's all we'll be covering in this tutorial. In the next one, we'll look at spawning the obstacles that the player has to avoid. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell icon to make sure you don't miss another video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.